First of all, I would like to say thank you for the organizing, for accepting my uh, presentation in this uh, session. What I'm going to talk about is something which we probably all know, but lots of you would find exciting and I hope stimulating. And since it's a uh, winter, this is the artist expression of skiing on the rocks, because what I'm going to do, I'm going to talk to you about the prehistoric rock art. Prehistoric rock art in Scandinavia, as you can see, is vast. This is after Jan Magne, who actually kindly put everything together for all of us, and you could see that the rock art itself is not the individual phenomena. This is something which people did for generations. First, we have 10,000 years old, and we can say that the rock carving, actually, the, the, the carving itself as a practice is still a practice today. For those who are not quite familiar with the rock art, how we date rock art, of course you cannot date the rocks, but you can uh, date how the rocks have been exposed. So you could see the ice sheet is melting, which we are still experiencing today, and by melting the ice sheet it's uh, making certain areas available, and then people uh, use it and carve it. So from something like this, you could see the areas which were then open and carved, and this is the team which is um, recording the biggest site in this area, which is Zalavruga, and it has eight and a half thousand square meters, which we have fully recorded. Overall, in this so-called White Sea region, we have 14 sites. I will be concentrating <coughs> on site number 10, Zalavruga. This is when you have dating, and you can see how nicely it looks like. This is the uh, this is the uh, longest used site and I will be looking at the group number 8 in the phase 3. This is the rock art. I don't know how well you could see, because the light might not be very good, but you could see that there is a whale over here, and there are lines leading to the whale. They are both over here. The day is really nice. What is this? Actually, when you look at the pictures before, you could see that the picture is flat. However, if you cut the rock, so to speak, you could see that this is a platform of seeing. This is how you should be seeing it and how you approach it. Coming back, do you see probably much better? This is the way, those are the boats, and there are some other events happening here. This is recorded, as you could see, for photogrammetry, and uh, partly we, we use trolled. This is a tradition that the Russian scholars are using and that's what we are using also, not to disturb the tradition that the way as people do it. What do you see here? You could see the whale in the middle. This is the small whale. You could see the boats, one, two, three, four, five, six boats attached to the whale by the harpoon. You have bears. You have someone hunting the, uh, probably a, a deer, those are also elks which are walking these directions. There are other boats, there are birds walking. So you could see that this is slightly, or not slightly, quite a complex composition. What you see, however, from your own perspective, you see, okay, this is a hunt, the whale hunt. This is not a whale hunt. Because, first of all, the, uh, the size of the whale, which I'll show you later, is completely different. And if you have six bows attached to the whale, basically you will pull it apart, because the whale is too small. And look how many people, archaeologists consider that those six sticks, they are humans sitting on the boat. But what we have here, we have an adult elk, the small elk, and we have bears walking, whale hunting, and everything is at once shown to you on this, uh, uh, on this description. So, thinking about the whale, which is in the center of the composition, this whale is somewhere here. You could see how small it is. This is beluga whale. It is called beluga from Russian word for white, because it's a white whale. When the whale starts to get um, uh, adult, it use, uh, it's losing its gray skin and become uh, white. And you could see how small it is. Because I don't know if you know that not all the whales are the whales. Some whales are the dolphins because it become the dolphin family. And those little whales like this one, like beluga, this is actually the dolphin. And then the hunting is slightly different and how you kill them is slightly different. So what do we know about this whale? 
We know that when the ice is melting in the Bering Sea, somewhere north over here, they are actually coming after those little, they are relatively small um, um, uh, fish, very fatty fish, so they are coming here in the summer and then in the late summer they are leaving. What is important about eating those things? That when you start to think about the whales and how they are hunted, if you use ethnographic records, from Russia, Amur River, or any American, uh, North American sites, this is completely different because they have salmon. And then the, the whale is going into the estuary of the rivers after salmon. Here the whale is staying outside in the deep waters, in the open waters. And if you could see, those are the best time to kill it somewhere over here or hunt it somewhere over here. So that actually others would indicate if you were a hunter, where you would like to go and hunt for it. Hunting has to be done at least two people in a boat, no more. One is throwing the harpoon and one is navigating the boat. But you can see how many boats we have here. How to kill the creature? There are two best things to kill it. First of all, you smack it somewhere over there, 45 degrees but you know that not a lot of people will actually break it over here and because it's a skull it's very very hard or you go to the area of lungs and heart by introducing oxygen and punching it basically the animal suffocates so that's the easiest way how to do it and all the good hunter would do it but now see how small is this way with a comparison those are the modern pictures with a comparison to the boat and what we see here that this is the, the way as the whale is actually towed. Those traps are standing on the shore and pulling the whale towards the land. The whale is quite uh, difficult to be killed because it has very peculiar way of behaving. It does not like sound. So if the whale hears something and is very prone to hear things, actually it would, would disappear maybe for years, uh, for, for, for days or even for weeks and then your area of hunting is gone, so you have to be very quiet. The size of it can actually be to one, 1,500 kilograms from two and a half meter to six and a half meter, but what is very important for every hunter in the north is fat, because that's what makes us survive cold weather. 40% of the, uh, of the uh, weight is fat actually very well uh, fat with, which we um, digest. Also what we have here, we have here this little picture or a little image of their way. We know that this is very small, but we know that this picture is not one to one if you compare it with the boats. But we know that this is actually after four or seven days after the birth, because before that the whale is hanging on the mother's back. This is what you have seen, this is slightly going down, you stand here and you could see everything. And now let's think about cubism. What is cubism? Cubism brings you to the same space, uh, to the different places in the same time, or actually to the one object in the same time. If it's me, you know, upside down, this is my head, those are my shoulders, and I'm looking at you here, this is how I see you. You see me like this. If I stand like this, you will see only face, you know, profile of me. So you could see how the of the, the images works. You could see that we have see f there are certain things flattened here. Oops. If we look at the history of art, what we see that in medieval period we have only one artist and one viewer. You always stand in the front of the picture, and you see one thing, and you could see that you have zero here. This is, a, this is the king, which is on the horse, is hunting for the deer, those poor rabbits in a state of disarray trying to escape. But the question is, who is showing this? One person is showing you the image. So this is story of a one, not a story of lots of people. If you look at the uccello, and this is Renaissance, despite that everything goes to this um, cardinal point over here, everybody actually is seen from one point. The same if you look at the Richard Long, which is a contemporary art, you stay in one place and you see the landscape. Again, we have it zero. If you start to look at the uh, early 20th century, the situation starts to change slightly. Because this is Matisse, 
he's doing nothing except they're moving the table and the floor are tiling in a slightly a skewed way we can see so we are at once in one place here and in one place over here but because he flattened the picture this is what we see this is a very simple picture this is Picasso you could know that with the with the cubism you can have 100, 360 degrees over here and then you don't know what you see so you could see the woman which is looking at us and in the same time you see it from the profile because she moved 90 degrees or actually she hasn't moved 90 degrees you have moved 90 degrees and you are seeing her in the same time the uh, cubism itself is not very uh, hasn't been very good in the sense of our brains because what we see is only 10% of the image or the stimulation which comes to our brain and if we start on the state cubies very often people are overloaded and they say what is this I can't see anything but if you actually use the cubies picture but you still see the visual narrative of station point you actually can make a sense what is this if you look at the station point of the uh, rock art you could see that it's all over the place you could see that we are 160 degrees uh, 360 degrees we are standing here 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 we are everywhere so what does it mean that we are in a different place in the same time not all the rock art looks the same as previous one and if we put all those station points together we could see the sophistication and actually placing individuals in the space taking it up and now if we use oops, oops, if we use our visual narrative as looking only one place you could see that we are not look, seeing a lot the red ones is actually homage to the rock art in uh, Scandinavia when they used to paint in, in red so that's what people see I was not able to make transparent so this is what you should not see is the black but you could see they are not seeing quite a lot because it's just on your eyes up. if we go to the something different which is also um, very important in, in the contemporary or in, in traditional art history is a picture plane you could see that here the picture plane is the same you could see that the picture plane here is the, is the same but what is happening here this is outside of our visual tradition this is Chinese, Japanese, Korean visual tradition so you can have a station point here but you can have also station point here in the same time so the landscape has been moved but the people which you are seeing are staying the same and even the worst we are challenged when we think about the Egyptian uh, carvings you could see this is like someone had the box painted everything in the box and then opened to the box tortured it and opened but our brains knows what we are seeing and this is how we can challenge our own view and we could see that because this what we saw previously it's so called the aerial perspective you look from the air if we use the same perspective into the rock art because we see that we see the wave from the top and the other wave from the top we not only have 360 degree we are adding also the depth and if we think about this only one medium which we have in our own modern vocabulary is the film the film which allows us to be in the same place in the different places in the same time when we see everything from the side and everything from the top and the bottom and this is how the cubism this is more sophisticated than cubism because we are landscape in the different places in the same time rather than we are visualizing, visualizing only one object so if we think about this and this is theoretical archaeology group the theor without the theory we, not not, we should not be here and the theory is, is upper connected theory, uh, which is Latour's, which is saying something about that the material culture in a certain time and space actually brings people together. So the story here is about the hunt, but the story is not about the kill. Because how you hunt for the way, you have to prepare harpoons, you have to look if the waves are coming. Everybody, including the smallest children, have to be very quiet. 
then all the other people are actually killing the whale and the towing is. And then someone has to butcher the whale, someone has to use the, the meat and store it, someone has to use the clothes. So actually the whole community has hunted this whale. And this is the time when the whale has been hunted and the whale is towed to the uh, shore, but is towed by all those people which in reality took part in the hunt, but not in the kill. Thank you very much.